Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmay, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our DOM manipulations using JavaScript. So, in the previous video tutorial of this JavaScript playlist, we understood and learned how to take input from users via the text box and then display that value in the alert box, or you can perform any activity. And I also gave you a task of taking two text boxes and taking username and password, wherein if the username and password matches, you display some message. Otherwise, you display some other message. Using if else control statements. So in this video tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be understanding or learning how to take input from radio buttons. So let's see what these radio buttons are. So in the body, I'm just first going to add two radio buttons. So to do that, I have to type in input and I have to say type is equal to radio. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, we are getting a radio button. So radio buttons are used when you have to select one option out of multiple options. So let me just first type the code and you'll understand it. So after the type attribute of this input type, we have to give value. So I'm going to write simple snippets over here, which is my channel name. After that, I'm going to close the input type. And to display the value, I'm just going to write simple snippets. So as you can see, we are seeing an option of simple snippets, which is unchecked. If you click on it, it gets checked, right? Similarly, I'm just going to add one more input type, which is again a type of radio here. I'm going to say Telusco learnings and inside the value attribute, I'm going to say Telusco learnings again. Okay. So we have two channels that is simple snippets and Telusco learnings between that. I'm going to give a BR tag that is break tag. And lastly, I'm just going to add a button. I'm going to say click me and again, give a break. Okay, so what we're going to do is when we click on this button, what we want to know is whichever value is selected, we have to show it in the alert box. And if no value is selected, then we have to show some message wherein we will say that no value is selected or something like that. Okay. So this is something that we have to do in JavaScript. As of now, you can see nothing is happening. So let's see the JavaScript code. So before moving on to the JavaScript code, I just added one more attribute in the input type. That is this name attribute. So what we're doing is we're giving this name group one. So GRP one and the same name we are giving it to the next input also. So what this does is you can select only one of the two options over here. And this is done because of us giving the same group name. Okay. So if I would have given this another name, let's say this is group two, then in the output, I can select both of them together, right? So now you can see both of them are selected. However, what we want is we can select only one channel name at a time. So that's why you have to give the same group over here. And then you can select only one out of the two. Okay. So this name can be anything, but if you give the same names to both the input types, so this is the name attribute and you have to give the same value. If you want to select only one of the N number of input types, so you can have multiple radio options also, but right now we are just going to be using two. So again, quickly giving them IDs also, we have to still give them IDs. So this is going to be RD one that is radio button one and I'll give this as RD2. We also have to give ID2 button. So button ID BTN1. And now we have to use its on click event. So I'm going to say on click and call a function named FN1. Let's say this is FN1. So we have to still create this FN1 in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So in the script tag, let's start to create this function one that we are calling on the on click button. So I'm going to say function FN1. That's the name of the function, right? In the opening and closing curly braces, that is the inside the body. What we are going to do is we're going to create two variables. I'm going to say where RD one is equal to, I'm going to say document dot get element by ID. So in order to access this input type by its ID, we are going to be using the get element by ID method. If you watch the previous two videos of this playlist, you must have got a good idea about what get element by ID does. So in the ID, I'm going to pass RD one because we want to access the first input type. Similar to this, I'm going to create one more variable RD two. And here I'm going to pass the ID of RD two. That is the second input type. So basically these two variables are now HTML elements. You can see if you hover on this, you can see in the tooltip, it is showing HTML element, which means that this RD one is an HTML object, which is referencing this input tag. Okay. And this RD2 is referencing this input tag. This is the second radio button. 
So now we have to check which one is checked or unchecked, right? So depending upon what is checked or what is unchecked, we have to call the appropriate output. That is, we have to show which one is checked or unchecked. So this can be done using the if else control statement. So I'm going to say if what I'm going to say is rd1 dot checked equal equal to true. If true, then I'm going to say alert. Inside the alert box, I'm going to say the channel selected is colon plus which will append the new string. I'm going to say rd1 dot value. So what I did over here is this checked is a property of this HTML element, which is an input type of radio button. So whenever a radio button is referenced in JavaScript as a variable, we have a property called checked. And whenever you check this, this check property always becomes true. So since this is an HTML element object, it will be associated with a number of properties as well as methods, right? So one of the property is checked and it is always true whenever that particular element and that is that radio button is checked or unchecked. So similarly, this was for RD one. I'm going to say else if in the condition, what I'm going to say is for RD two. So if RD one is not checked, that is if RD one is false, it is going to move ahead and check for else if and it's going to check for RD two and the same condition for RD two also. If RD two is checked, we want to print RD two dot value. So what are these value attributes? So if you check the input types in the HTML, we have been given one value attribute also. So this is that value attribute exactly in the object version. So the value here is simple snippet. So that is what is going to be printed over here. If simple snippet is checked and if telescope learnings is checked, that is what is going to be printed over here. And if both of them are unchecked in the else, we can say in the alert message, we can say no channel selected. So if you see, I have not given any curly braces for if else and else if control statement blocks. Because if there is only one line of code inside if or else if or else, you don't have to compulsorily give the curly braces of each of the blocks. If you have multiple lines, then you have to give curly braces. Okay. So just to keep the code short, I have not given anything. Okay. So this is the complete FN one function, which we are calling on the button on click. So let's try to check this out right now. Nothing is selected. Let's click the button. There you go. You can see no channel selected, which means that else part is executing. Let's select simple snippets and click the button. And there you go. Now you can see the channel selected is simple snippets. Let's select telescope learnings. And there you go. The channel selected is telescope learnings. So this means that our function is working perfectly fine. If you want, you can change the value inside this. I'll say SS for simple snippets. And now if I select simple snippets and click on the button, there you go. You can see the channel selected is SS, which means that this value property of this RD one object is mapped to the value attribute of, of this input radio button, right? So I hope you're getting this and I hope you've understood how to take input from a radio button. In the previous video, we saw how to take input from a text box. This was for radio button. And this is how we'll see more and more different versions and variants of HTML DOM manipulations. Okay. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.